lots of bushes with, which have colourful petals, colourful blooms on them. You could still use the same, same technique just to build up all of those different layers and uh, lights. Okay, how's that looking? Nice and nice and bright and sunny. Just remembering nice sunny day getting those. So this is the fifth the fifth layer of light. You see how that just really really adds some sculpture really add some brightness in there. Just lovely. Let's make that one just a little bit bigger. And then over here, I'm going to stick with the smaller brush just for a little bit of finesse. Finesse even with the, the big marks. As you can see, I'm starting at the tops again. This is where the Sun will be hitting most, most abundance. And just getting that sunshine, of course, if you're still, there's still a few little slightly damp areas here which are mixing in with the yellow, that's just fine. Just picking out some really, really bright, bright areas. Of course, leaves do go in all sorts of different directions, but they can very generally feel like they're going in one, one direction. So they're either, I mean, some, some leaves all point, point down towards the ground, don't they? But there'll still be a little bit of variation there. Now bringing some of the light, maybe there'll just be a few bits which are catching the sun here as it filters through, really picks up on that bit through there, even if you just Want to smudge slightly to get the soft look, but you're still wanting to pick up on those those leaf shapes, those individual leaf shapes. Let's get a bit more, a bit more coming coming through there. That's just a few on here. Never neglect the side of the painting. You always want to have just a little bit of interest just at the side there. Okay, I think that's really got some nice brightness, bright cheeriness to it. I'm just going to fill in a touch more of the, the dark green on this side, which is something I noticed when I stepped away from it. I just needed a little bit more dark green just filling in underneath underneath some of these. Okay, all right. Well, that's done beautifully for us with the, the impression of leaves of structure, really, really simple, far away, close to us. So now we're going to have a little look at the trunk and then the shadows on the, the ground. And that will then complete a very, very easy, uh, beautifully realistic looking, but expressive landscape with trees in. So first thing I'm going to do is work a little bit on the trunk. Now, even just using the same palette of colors, I'm going to start creating a little bit of light on here. Now, making the, the light brown, I'm starting with orange. Starting with orange and then adding a little bit of blue into it. Orange and blue makes brown, basically just mixing all the primary colors together. And then adding some white in there. Adding the white really helps to see the balance of colors. And you can see how pinky that looks, can't you? Now I've added the white in. So maybe put a, I'll put a bit more yellow in there just to make it a slightly warmer looking brown. Now what I want to do here is just to create a very, soft, loose impression of bark. So I'm going to do a bit of uh, dryish brushing and really dry brushing. It's more to do with the pressure that you use rather than the fact that the brush is, is very dry. You maybe have less paint on there, 
but of course it's still got some some wet paint now again i'm thinking about the the light coming from above so a lot of these branches would be in shade but i'm still going to just add little bits of light now i want the edge of the branch to feel quite solid but within the branch where you'd be getting quite a lot of variation in texture with the the bark so i can make quite a a, a straight line around the outside and then just blur it inwards and even if you do that with your finger over the canvas texture it creates really good bark like look so a straight edge and then just feathering it in I'm thinking about the where the lights coming from so straight edge on the top feather it down perhaps just a little bit of a scrub or a soft soft blend now this brown is still quite quite a dark color there's obviously a lot of light hitting that that branch there and you've got this little one here that's been cut off or broken off quite a lot of light getting onto that one there and just feathering it down so straight away you start to see the, the forms now there would definitely be some light coming down onto the the trunk See how that just the light strokes instantly make that textured look of bark. Now there'd definitely be light hitting that, that root there. Always remember the outside edge. The, it's a bit like the, the silhouette of the, the uh, leaves. You want to make sure that the edge where the light meets the dark, so the edge of your object, reflects the texture of it. So the edges of these roots will be quite solid looking and smooth but within then the root structure and within the the tree bark itself it's much more varied so just a few little light strokes like this highlighting where some of the the roots are where some light will be coming down and just hitting hitting the trunk bit of variation is never a bad thing and it probably wouldn't be too much light under there because it's just that's where the some of these branches might be bending out towards us so just light 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 brushing along the trunk you see how that just comes alive with the structure with three-dimensional impression so quickly so quickly now if you want to add in trunks if, if maybe these trees on the horizon have got visible trunks even using the same thick brush you know you could add in just you know, little bits of little bits of light that would be coming down onto the uh, connecting with the ground and and just the the idea that they would be just poking through some of those some of those leaves if you make a few straight lines, you don't want to make a fence post though. Be really careful that you don't create very even, even lines. But just a hint of, of some, some brown and a little bit of branch coming through, that can, that can be enough just to give, give the impression of, okay, well, there's obviously, there's obviously some, some structure there which is holding these, these trees, trees together. I'm just blurring it because I don't want them to be too, too specific looking just giving that little hint hint there all right now back to this as i know that it's going to dry a little bit darker i remember pushing the light now i'm going to take some of my lovely light yellow that i used for the the leaves just mixing in the brown that was on the brush adding a little bit more white to it so i'm getting a very light pinky sort of pinky brown tone and again just getting rid of a lot of it on the brush, adding in some light, making sure that the edge is nice and firm, and then I can feather it down into the roots. Now you probably would do grass or something which is coming over quite a few of these roots. That's, uh, that was something I, I showed in a, in a separate tutorial, so I'm not going to add grass into this, I'm going to show you Actually, I'm going to show you how to do shadows underneath the tree. So just adding in variations, 
adding in a little bit more light to some of these, these branches. Perhaps just getting little patches here and there where the light would be filtering through the canopy. And as always, if you feel like you've put a bit too much on, you can just go back with one of your one of your other colours. And I think at this stage I might want to enhance some of the, the really dark shapes that are in there, which I've just noticed here, adding on a little bit more light there, perhaps a little bit of light there as well, just to bring a bit of brightness through this, this section. Perhaps there's a lot of sun coming through this area, so I'll make sure that one's nice and bright as well, just to match in the sunshine. Okay, now I'm going to add in a little bit more dark. So for that, I want to change my brush so I don't have any white on the brush. And starting with, again, starting with my orange, adding in blue, but this time making it, making it much, much darker. A little bit more red in there. So getting a really, really dark purple, essentially, with a, with a bit of yellow. And this is where I can now go back in and just put some of those deeper shadows in. So perhaps in between the roots here, underneath there, in, in his armpit here. Make sure that you're still getting a nice crisp edge and you can feather it up through, through the light areas. Stroking it in, this will make quite a difference. Just a little, some fast little bits here and there, bringing that down through, perhaps just tempering a little bit of that light. And you see these fast, loose marks, they're replicating the bark beautifully, that sort of rough roughness. And if you put on too much dark, you can always, always go back with the light. Now I want to just make sure that that looks like a uh, sort of broken little bit of branch, so I'm just going to add in some crisp shadow underneath there and coming through here again underneath the, the arm of the branch so it stands out quite cleanly where it joins on to the tree. Now using this same dark colour base, this, this purple colour, I'm going to add a little bit of green into that because when I'm working on the shadow underneath the tree, you always want to think of the surface that the object is on that's got the shadow on it, rather than the object itself and the colour of that. So here it's, I mean actually it's the same with the, the green leaves and the green of the grass, but rather than thinking of what a really dark brown is, you want to think about the, the grass colour here, the, the ground which is green and how that would look if it was shaded. So it's making a very dark green tone, which is the same colour as the one you started with for your first layer, perhaps just a little bit more green than purple, so just a little bit more yellow in there. Now first of all, you'd have you want to follow the, the line of the ground. So maybe this is quite a flat area of, of land. And this is where you can also just clean up some of your, your edges. Now, this is quite a good technique if you're trying to get something looking a little bit random. So the, the light that would be dappling through, through the leaves. Think about the shape of the whole shape of the tree. So your shadow is not just going to be here because that'd be very flat. So maybe there's shadow from the canopy which is coming all the way round the back of the tree there. Now what you want to be careful of is that you don't, you don't try too hard to avoid painting over the edge of your tree because you want to make sure that you have a crisp edge of the trunk but that you're not avoiding it by creating, you can create a bit of a halo around the outside if you're being too careful to uh, not to paint over what you've done. So you, what you could do is create an edge there that you then work out from or just put a bit of masking tape over the, the area you've painted when it's dry and add your shadow in afterwards. So what I'm going to show now is a bit of a zigzag so you see that just creating zigzags that go back and forth. So I'm using a flat brush 
and that zigzag will automatically leave holes which then look like the dappling between the leaves and allowing the brush to really scrub along which creates quite a lot of natural variation. Now I'm keeping it very horizontal because this ground I'm going to say is flat. So I don't want the, the shadow to be going uphill. I don't want to be creating angled lines which will explain a different surface. So this is flat ground. So all of my, like the waves at the sea, you know, if you're doing uh, waves, they're, they all tend to be uh, parallel to the, the bottom of the, the, the canvas, unless you've got really, really, really choppy sea. Uh, that they, because the, the water sticks to the earth, just as the, this flat bit of land does. I want all of these lines to be horizontal. I just need to make sure I'm just mixing enough of the, the dark. You see how that is creating the most amazing sort of dappling effect by just really scrubbing the brush left to right, but leaving, leaving space in between so little zigzags, little zigzags, and making sure you're getting the shaded bits in all of the, the really dark areas. So perhaps just add in a little bit more of the purple around the side here. Just want to preserve the crisp edge of my root. And maybe this has got a bit more canopy. So you see how that is now. That looks like a, perhaps there's some areas where you're filling it in bit more solidly where the light isn't. You just need to be aware of the edge, where the edge is, and also with, with the, the light, uh, you know, how the light would be, would be coming through. And perhaps then just add a scrub, a tiny little bit of, of the green shadow up around the base of these, just to blend, blend them in slightly. Now, if this was on a thick, grassy kind of meadow, then I would actually, all I need to do, think about the silhouette of the, the leaves on the horizon. All I would need to do would be to create little vertical lines. Hopefully you can see those in the, against the green. I'm just making the, I'm just mixing up some more of that dark purpley green. Creating little, there we go, that will stand out more for you. So you see how now just by changing the silhouette by making the, the little shadows stand up like little vertical lines from the flat plane of, of shadow shape that suddenly our eye picks out grassy shapes and understands well must be shadow on, on grass I can clearly see the little silhouettes and that's just tiny soft up brushing, I think that, I might just have made that up, brushing upwards with the flat brush to create that sense of, of spikiness against the, the ground. So that's just one way to, to completely change the way that all of that, that area looks. And of course, if you want it nice and, and soft, again, you can make these smooth so you can experiment with the way the surface that your object is on and just as easily alter it back. And if you fill in too much, too many of the gaps, and it looks like a really solid block, nothing to worry about. Acrylic is just amazing. You can paint over anything. You just need to dry it and you can go back in with your lighter green and, and then work, work backwards again. So that is just such an easy way to create shadow underneath a tree that looks nice and dappled and natural. Just add a few little bits over here as well. It's obviously a big tree. It's growing a little bit as I'm doing more experimentation. A little bit down here. And just against the, the hill there, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just blur in that original purple line with just a bit of bit of green. I'm thinking about the, you see how all my marks are sideways, they're all horizontal because of the, the plane of the, the hill. So we're following that shape. I'm just imagining where they might just be shadows 
might be peeking out a little bit. Okay, there you go. Really easy, three-dimensional tree, canopy, trees in the distance, shadow, so quickly, so easy to do, fabulous, realistic result, but expressive, a little bit of impressionism in there too. Now I've had a lot of fun, now it's your turn. Make sure you have loads of fun doing this. Okay, see ya, bye.